set up remote viewing with a web browser. Now, in a previous video, we discussed SCW Go, the mobile app, and how to get your NVR registered with your device. Uh, today, we're going to do this separately from the mobile app. We're going to do this completely from the web browser. So we're going to be reaching our NVR by our local IP address. Now, if you don't have this, it can also be retrieved from the direct local monitor. It's going to look something like this. We're looking for our IPv4 address. Now, once we're in our NVR, we're going to go to the Setup menu, then Network, and then P2P. On this page, we're going to see our P2P on and off, our server address, and our register code to register our NVR with this service. Uh, currently, it's not online because we have not registered our account. So we're going to pop over to this website here and get registered. All right, so I do not have an account to log in with yet. I'm going to do a sign up and enter my email. And in this situation, I'm just going to use the beginning of my email as the username. Set my region. So once you click this field, you're going to get your continents here. I'm going to do America, United States. All right, and then we're going to press acquire. This is going to send us a verification code to this email I listed. So I'm going to pop over to my other tab here. May take a minute to come in sometimes. Also check your spam folder and make sure nothing went in there. OK, so we got our notification code. All right, and then we're going to set a password here. I'm going to use 12345SCW exclamation point currently. You can set whatever you'd like for your password. All right, now that we've got our account created, we're going to go ahead and log in with that email and password. All right, and now we're in our account here. So we've got some options at the top here, uh, device management, organization management, sharing records, personal info, which will show your email and account information. Uh, device management's where we want to be. We're going to have some add options here, delete, refresh, and we can also see devices and accounts that other people have shared to us. So we're all clear here so far. We're going to need our device register code. So we're going to go back over to our MBR. I'm going to copy this entire code. I'm going to come back to our Star for Live site. Click plus add. We're going to paste our registration code. And then we're going to name our device. I'm just going to call this MBR. Click OK. Now this is going to put it in our list here. Sometimes it can take a moment to come completely online. And then once you've registered it with the account, within a few moments you should see your account register here and your username as well. So let's give that a shot. There we go. In some cases, if you ever run into it not connecting, port mapping, we want to make sure that this is off. And this should make a solid connection to Star for Live. So here we go. My username is showing. My device name is showing. Now, if we go back to our Star for Live page, we should be able to refresh and see that this is online. Online NAT just means it's traversing more networking equipment at your location. And this is all looking good. So we also get some options over here to edit our name. We can delete our device. We can change the retrieve the password for the device. We can also share out to other users. And we have a link here that'll take us directly to our NVR in a new tab. Some other options available, such as the sharing. So if you have another person who wants to register to get access to your cameras, you'll have them come to Star for Live, register their own email, and then from your side, you can share this to them. Just want to put their email in. The important thing here is that they already have an account with this service or else they will not be able to receive it. It'll tell you as much. It will tell you that the user does not exist. So we just want to make sure that they sign up via the mobile app or from this website. We're also going to get a valid period. So it's going to do 30 days by default. We just want to make sure that this gets updated to the time that you require. You can also note. Okay. 